Hi everybody and welcome to today's Faith Moment. So today I'm carrying on a few thoughts about mental health and how to help our mental health in these days, weeks and months. And as I said last time, I'm doing that because I think mental health had a bit of a stigma in previous years and there's nothing wrong with mental health, it's part of our well-being. And just as you might have a sports injury and you look after that, that, that injury for a time until it heals, so mental health is something that needs to be looked after and also strengthened. Some of us came into the challenges of the last 18 months with strong mental health. Some of us came in with mental health that was challenged and that will affect in part how we are today. But there's something that all of us can do to strengthen our mental health. And on my last faith moment, for me, one of the main things is being connected abiding in Jesus, abiding in him, finding those connection times and seeking a life of connection, both with him, with his church, with his people, in so many ways, practical when you're walking, when you're driving, when you're reading the Bible, when you're just thinking, connecting with God. Today, I want to think about something slightly different and I've called it boundaries, good, good mental health, boundaries. In my last faith moment, I spoke about how my electric toothbrush, if I forget to recharge it, it just begins to whir and then stops at some point. Our bodies, including our minds, are not supposed to work constantly without being recharged. And ideally, they're recharged by being connected into our Lord and Saviour. But one of the challenges, I think, of the last 18 months has been our minds. There's been so much information coming at us, so many things we have to decide. As a vicar, I've had all the stuff about masks, no masks, this, that, this, that, and different people saying different things now, different ears. And it's actually been really hard to keep clear in my mind. And it's been really important to do that. And for all of us, we've had different mental challenges. So some of the tiredness that's around isn't, isn't often a physical tiredness, it's, it's as much a mental tiredness. So how do boundaries help with this? I've got a friend who's a, a life coach and she gave some re really interesting insight into this about boundaries. She's very clear on setting good boundaries for your life, in your time, in what you do, in, in where your thoughts go. But one of the things that she said and that she'd got it from a book somewhere, they, the, the writer said that boundaries are in place to protect something that's important. So boundaries are in place to protect something that's important. So the fence around the garden allotment on the picture that I've shown, that fence is there to protect the plants and the vegetables that are growing inside the garden. So catch the picture, there's a garden with a fence around it and the fence is the boundary. It's there to protect something important that's inside to protect it from dogs or cats or pests, but to protect what's important that's inside the boundary. And what's inside is still growing. It needs protection. It needs um, looking after. And it's also really important. It's been tended and it's enjoyed by the owner. So my friend said that boundaries are not selfish things. Boundaries are there to protect what's important. And the book that she showed me, it, it talked about Jesus's boundaries, how he went off all night to pray. And his disciples were saying, everyone's looking for you. He put a boundary around his time, around his energy. He put boundaries around his thinking. And when somebody came with something that was absolute rubbish, he'd often just push it away. Remember Simon Peter, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't having rubbish coming through what was important to him which was his calling, his ministry, who he was and who he is. Jesus put boundaries around in his life to protect what was important in his life, that connection with God. And that helped me because I thought, actually, yeah, boundaries aren't selfish. They're protecting what's important inside. Let me show you a little bit about what I mean. One of the Psalms where I've been living, I think, in these last months is Psalm 131. And the psalmist says, O oh Lord, my heart is not lifted up. 
My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. So when this pandemic kicked off, I was asking all the big questions, reading all the information, and I still am to a degree, but I've actually corrected myself a little bit on that and put some boundaries there where I don't watch the news after a certain time in the evening where I don't check emails after a certain time unless I'm working that evening. I put some boundaries in place because I found that my head was just getting too tired and I wasn't being productive. So this sense of my heart is not lifted up, my eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. I suspect a lot of our mental tiredness comes because we're trying to think about things and engage with things that are actually too big and too high for us. And it's not just about pandemic. Sometimes people get worried and anxious about the future of the church and this and this and this. And that's great to think about if God's asking you to. But if he's not asking you to think about that, you're just going to wear yourself out and be of no use at all where you actually are. In the same way, when we worry about our family and friends or worry about situations in the world, if God's asked you to do that and to pray, that's fine. But if he hasn't, you're very likely to be wearing out your headspace with things that are too high, too high for you and too marvelous for you. I've only got a limited headspace. I've only got a limited brain. And if I wear it out using it on things that actually are not mine to do, then I'm not effective where I am. So to put boundaries around where we put our minds is really helpful. And the psalmist goes on to say that I've calmed and quieted my soul like a weaned child with his mother. My soul is like the weaned child with me. The psalmist has calmed and quieted his soul. He stopped looking and stretching for things that are too great and too marvelous for him. He's come down to connect with God. There's something here for me about protecting boundaries around our mind, around our headspace, around our thoughts, protect our thoughts and our energy. If a certain situation really gets to you, if you find yourself getting wound up about someone or about something, maybe just come back to God with it and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Help me to calm and quieten my soul. If you want me to pray about that, that's different. But if I'm getting wound up or exhausted with it, then actually I need to do something. And the psalmist here is really clear that he's taken the action. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself. I have decided to change how I operate. I have calmed and quieted my soul. So the first thing I want to say on mental health with boundaries is actually protecting, I call it head space, thought space, head energy. If you find that your mind's whirring, or you're spending a lot of time or thought on one thing or one situation, it may be that you're slightly obsessed with that. And that's understandable, but it's not helpful. So take that to God. And wherever it is, put it on God's table and say, Father, this I'm leaving with you. I can't cope. I need you to handle this for me. So the first thing is that mental boundaries protect and help us to calm so that we can be effective. But our minds have been given to us for a reason. If it was just passive and we're just gonna sit in Jesus's arms and just be able to relax that little kid, it's nice, but it's not real. You've been made for a reason, I've been made for a reason. And part of the boundaries that Jesus put in place was to protect his calling and his purpose on this earth. He put boundaries in place to connect with his father so that he could re- not really understand, but know deeply the calling that God had put on his life and be effective. If you want to know the calling of God on your life and be effective, protect your mind from other stuff that's not yours and connect into what is yours. And just the last two verses I want to show, Colossians 1 and 2. So if you have been raised with Christ, what? I've been raised with Christ into the heavenly places? Seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. You've got an action now. When your mind isn't as tied with all the other stuff, seek the things that are above. Set your minds 
on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Just catch this. This mind that now isn't encumbered with so much other stuff has capacity. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now, what this is not saying is that you're going to be so spiritual that you're no earthly use. It's actually the opposite. There are some people that just, if you're not careful, can be just lost in a spiritual world, but have no effect here. It's not saying that at all. It's saying, set your minds on what's true, on what God has said, on who he is and what he wants to do. Set your mind on those things, on your calling, on your purpose, just like Jesus did. Not on the things that are on earth, the things that will try and break through and take up your energy. Don't let the world take over. Be so heavenly minded that you are incredibly effective and useful for God here on earth with the things that he's given you to do. Not some great task that he's given somebody else that you wear yourself out worrying about, but so heavenly minded that you're effective with the job that he's given you to do. And as your mind is calmer, as mind's calmer, he may prompt you to make that phone call. He may prompt you to go and see someone. He may prompt you to give some finances to a charity or to someone in need. He may prompt you with an idea that would help others. He may prompt you because suddenly you're engaging with your heavenly father on the things that he's interested in and that his call on your life and the things that he wants you to do. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things on earth, for you've died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You've got a heavenly calling to be worked out here today on earth. So what's this all about? It's about, for me, it's about putting sensible boundaries, caring spiritual boundaries around my thought life so that my limited brain capacity doesn't get worn out with things that aren't for me to do or aren't important for me to sort out. Don't waste my mind, my energy, on things that aren't for me, that are too high and too marvellous. Instead, set my mind on the things above. Lord, you handle the rest of it, Father. What do you want me to do today? What do you want to do with me today? What's my calling in your purpose? Good mental health, boundaries in our thought life. And maybe at the end of this video, just take some time to just be honest with yourself. Where does a lot of your time go in your thought life? Is it worry? Is it fear? Is it obsession about someone or something? Are you clear in your mind for God to be able to engage with you and show you what he wants to do with you today? And it may well be he's got some great answers to some of the problems that you would be worrying about by ourselves. So let's pray. So Father God, help us to listen to you because you have great ideas. As one child said, you've got great ideas. Help us to listen to you. And may our minds help us to put good and effective boundaries around what we think about so that we can set our minds on you and on your calling. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you as you think and pray today and always. Amen. So this is the second on a series on mental health and the last one will be next time. God bless.